we've assembled the rabara ready to fly but you mustn't just chuck it straight into the air. First we must do a pre-flight check of every part. So we're going to start at the head end and we need to check the battery is firmly in place, that the neck band holds the velcro together, everything is smooth and correct. What should happen is if the falcon's going to hit you hard on the head the neck should be able to dislocate and if you look inside here the battery leads have got a little bit of spare lead here so that when that dislocates it doesn't disconnect the battery otherwise if the falcon hits you on the head and lets go you'll be flying but you've got no control <clears throat> and she'll turn around and grab you. So that's the head, that's all correct, everything's fastened underneath on the chest. The wings, Raimi, what should we do check on the wings? If your wings are not uh, on the right way on the fuselage, here's a big gap and you want to make sure that this gap is closed. Only when this gap is closed, everything is fine. Sometimes it could be that there is a wire stuck inside the, inside the fuselage underneath the wing. Then take the wing off and make sure all these wires are on the right place inside the fuselage. Make sure there's no gap. It's the most important thing and do that on both sides. Say for example, I go down the hobby shop and I buy another battery and it's not exactly the same as the wing beat battery. Yeah. Maybe it weighs a bit different, a slightly different size. Mm -hmm. Could that affect the center of gravity? Of course, of course. When your battery is heavier, your model will be more nose heavy and you will notice that in flight. It is very difficult to pull up out of a dive and it's very hard to do your maneuvers. So you can solve that. Just add a little piece of foam inside the head so the battery will be a bit further back. Well, then we come down to the tail part. And as you can see, one flap is standing down and one flap is standing up. Of course, you want to make sure that every time you throw the model, that all these flaps are standing straight. So if you throw this in the air, well, you know what will go and happen. It's gonna go, let's see, what is it gonna do? It's kinda gonna go. Indeed, indeed. That's what he will do. And so crash. as soon as you throw it in the air, it will just make a sharp turn to the left and you will crash it. So what you can do about that, on this transmitter, you have the sub trims. They call the sub trims. These are these little trims. You want to make sure that if you look at your model over here, you want to make sure that these flaps are standing straight. So you can see that this sub trim is all the way to the left. You want to make sure that this is in the middle. And you can see that your flaps are already moving and they're going straight again. You can see you can turn your flaps with it, you can trim your flaps with it. You want to make sure that everything is in the middle. Look at your model and make sure it is in the middle. So you can adjust it a little bit. And you can adjust this flap a little bit. Don't forget it because this flap is very effective. So make sure this flap is very good. But just look at your model and make sure these flaps are just nicely straight and just equal. It's the most important thing. You can always trim it a bit in flight, but just do your pre-flight check correct. And that one. And that one is taking care of your rudder. Just you does look, the rudder. If you look at the rudder, you can That's see trim. I'm actually trimming my rudder. So you make sure that this is That's straight. This is straight. Okay, now on this transmitter, what do all the bits do? Well, we have on this transmitter, uh, we have of course the sticks to control the model. We have these sub trims that we just talked about. And then we have these switches on top of this transmitter. And the most important thing um, with these switches is that uh, you always start in beginner mode with this right switch. So your flight mode needs to be in beginner. But if you're not a beginner, if you're not a beginner, you can start an expert, of course, but okay. only when you're confident. So what is the difference? The beginner actually means um, that the stabilizer is on. Is indeed. Yeah, we have a stabilizer inside the model and this model will take care of beginners. And the, the gyro inside the model and the computer that it's programmed with indeed. will control it so you don't have to worry. Yeah, when you assembled your model, and you connected the battery, you were really sure that the model was on the ground. You initialized the gyros. Yep. It's very important. And now you know why. This is the stabilizer inside the model and it will help you 
with the flight. So for the people that are trying to get a bit the hang of it, they can use the stabilizer function, uh, the beginner function. So what you can do, you switch it on beginner and you can see if you're rolling your model, you can see that these flaps uh -huh. are counteract. It's doing that automatically for you. And the nice thing about this, you don't need to be very experienced. So if I'm going up, it's going to bring me down. Indeed. If I'm going down, it's going to pull me back up. Yeah, if indeed. If I'm rolling, it's going to roll me back. Like that. Indeed. <laughs> that's, that's what the beginner mode is doing. So it will help you a bit. If you are a bit more experienced, but you still want to have some help from the stabilizer, just a little bit, you can put it on advanced mode. With advanced mode, you will see that this gyro is actually not doing anything when you move your model in an angle. You can see it's not doing anything. It is only for the fast movements of the wind. So if you wiggle it fast, you can see that these flaps are moving. So you just lose half of your stability. I mean, when I'm, when I'm flying, I, I find it very useful if it's very strong and gusty wind to have a bit of well, you stabilizer. Can, you can choose what you want. Yeah. It is actually, um, yeah, we suggest to just put it in advanced mode to and help I, you. I have to tell you, Raimi, that sometimes when I'm flying and it's all going badly wrong, mm. if I just switch the stabilizer on and take my hands off everything, it all comes smooth again. So it is beautiful, it works flawlessly, but only when you put it underground and connect it. I cannot say it enough. Okay, now what do these two? Well, actually, do? we have one more function that oh. is expert. expert. It's only for the experts. I don't yeah. know if it's something for you, Nick. Yeah. But we'll put it on I expert, would. and now you will see these flaps, they will not do anything anymore, and you have the full control over it. So the whole stabilizer is off, and you can do well, funny stuff with it in the air. We'll show you doing funny stuff in a, another little film. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Well, and then we have one more switch, and that is taking care of the wing flapping. So this wing, with this wing flapping switch, you can put the, you can put it off or on. So if you want to flap your model, you just toggle the switch. And if you look at your model, it will flap. Or you can put it off again. And that's it. So when you launch it. Well, we suggest to just put it off, throw it, and while you're in the air, you just switch your wing flapping on. And if you do your landing, then you switch it off again. Okay, so take off and landings, best not to have the wing flapping. No, 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 uh, no. Not until you've just got it a little bit in the air. Uh, indeed, okay. indeed. Yeah, that's just an important thing and it will help you. I mean, it can be that it is a bit agile to fly, but unstable, so with the landing you want to have all your stability because with the flapping wing, it flies well, but to be really accurate flying, you know, when it's getting critical and you're just a meter off the ground, better to have a fixed wing. Yeah, I, I okay. prefer, personally, I um, prefer the fixed wing. It's more honest, it's more faster, it's more agile, it's just, I, I love it. But, okay. looks now, good. these two sticks, when I fly, I've got my throttle here. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, I control with that one. Yeah. But you don't fly like me. No, indeed. Um, I believe I'm pretty much the only guy that's flying the throttle on the right side. So the problem is if you're flying your throttle on the right side and you elevate on the left side, that can be really confusing if people take the transmitter out of my hand and try to control the model with my transmitter. It is simply uh, impossible. So mine is called mode 2. Indeed. indeed. Or mode 1. Most people fly mode 2. And the Rabaras, as we send them from the factory, will be programmed for mode 2. Yeah, yeah. They all have to throttle on the left side. That's because us mode 2 people are the normal ones. If you have a really special request or something, we can always change it to a different mode. But most people, normal people, <laughs> they fly with the throttle on the left side. So actually like this transmitter. Most people are used to this. Okay, well... Um, what else have we got to check? We've, have we checked everything on the model now? Well, we... I think so. Have we checked the pins? The pins, everything okay That here? is another thing. Make sure that everything is connected properly. These pins are in. Uh, everything is just 100%. Yeah. These horns, they are glued uh, firmly in place onto it. Yeah, you can move it and you can see how it is moving. Make sure that... 
everything is just in place and um, attached to each what other. What about if you've left something so that it goes in the fan? Well, if you're lucky, it stays like that. If you're unlucky, it will get through your fan and it could ruin your motor. So make sure there's nothing in front of the fan. And make sure when you did no a landing... No grass, no sand, no, no little sand, stones. Nothing. Just take care of this. It's just a simple thing. But make sure that there's no stuff no, inside. No. The, the other the thing to watch for this is if you have Jesses or Saboops on the Falcon and they're trailing, they could get into the fan. Now normally when we fly we just have anklets on and nothing trailing, so there's no problem. But if you've got a trailing flying Jess and it gets in that fan, well you all know what happens when something hits the fan. <laughs> you know that especially. <laughs> I've done it, the blades come off, the all bits go all over the place. Yeah. So don't have anything trailing and actually for Arabian falconry we have a 10 centimeter length sabuk especially for that purpose and we supply them. We also have a mesh system uh, which we can put across here to prevent things going in. Yeah, yeah, we will add that it's, later. It's most important that you don't let anything get into the fan. No, indeed. I think we're about ready to fly. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's only one thing to do and that's checking your controls pretty much as everything is working well. So make sure that when you get up, the model's going up, down, model's going down, the flaps, left, right, rotor is working, and your throttle. So let's get on to the fun bits. Indeed. <laughs> 